Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Right, uh, so today we're going to continue on the chapter number 7 which is introduction to uh, probability. Right, uh, on last class we already look at um, counting rule. Right, counting rule and we already learn uh, four important uh, formula for in import uh, in counting rule which is m multiplied with n uh, n r power of n and then one is uh, n factorial and then uh, the last one for uh, the last formula which is when we have a repeated object which is n factorial divided by r1 factorial multiplied with until k uh, rk factorial and then we also look at uh, permutation and combination right we already look at permutation and combination we already know uh, what is the difference between permutation and combination and under at the end of the last class you already look at the review on set theory right so under set theory we already look at uh, what is the definition of set and then uh, we also look at the re in uh, intersection of two set union of two set and then one is a sample space and then we also look at um, uh, complement set and Venn diagram right so and in in set theory I asked you yesterday to look into a rule of addition and especially on De Morgan law so I just want to recap what is the definition of De Morgan law De Morgan law says that when we have um, a union of set A and set B right they and then the complement of union A and B is equal to A complement intersect B complement. So this is one of the law in De Morgan, a uh, De Morgan law, right? Another one is when we have the complement of A U intersect B complement, right? Is also equal to A complement union B complement so this is the the formula for de morgan law right. so this is what the most important part in de morgan law right a union b complement right is also equal to a complement intersect b complement and a intersect b complement is also equal to a complement union b complement right so for today we're going to continue on the basic term in probability right the basic term in probability so in probability you need to understand some basic uh, notation such as an experiment a sample space and an event right so there are three basically three uh, notation that you need to understand the first uh, notation which is uh, experiment Experiment is an is a process of obtain and outcome. So example of experiment is rolling a dice is an experiment. Tossing a coin also an experiment. Drawing a ball from a box contain two red ball and two blue balls is also called as experiment. Anything the process that you're going to get an outcome is called as experiment, right? For another example is interviewing 30 randomly selected employees in the company, right? Is also called as an experiment, right? So this is the definition of experiment. So another term that you need to understand is a sample space. A sample space is a set of all possible outcome, right? When you roll a die, right? You, you know dice, right? So you have six-sided dice, right? So every outcome, right? Any po every possible, all possible outcome in rolling a dice is called a sample space. So sample space notation is S, capital letter S, and you need to understand sample space is also a set. So this is a sample space, 
So a set should contain a bracket and then the element inside, right? So element is all possible outcome, right? So if you're rolling a die, right? So all possible outcome in a die is the element of a sample space. So for example, a die we have six sided, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six possible outcome. So six possible outcome ni adalah sample space. Another example is if you are uh, tossing a coin, so coin we have head and tail. So the, the, the sample space should be head or tail. We have only two element in a sample space for tossing a coin. So another example, if you look at C here, uh, if you're drawing a ball from a box contain two red balls and two blue balls. So the sample space should be two red balls and two blue balls. So uh, another example of sample space is uh, when you interview 30 randomly selected employees in a company for their job satisfaction with the present job. So job uh, satisfaction, whether you uh, you will ask uh, whether uh, you satisfied with the job, yes or no. So the sample space, all the possible outcomes, sample space should be yes or no, right? So you need to understand sample space is all possible outcome for an experiment, right? So now uh, another term that you need to understand is an event. Right. An event is a, a set of outcome resulting from an experiment. It is taken from a sample space. Right. So if you roll a die, right, rolling a die is an experiment. Right. So the sample space for rolling a die is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Right. So if you roll a die one times, let's say you have event A. So the set A. You, let's say you roll a die one time, you dapat tiga. So, three is the rolling, uh, three is an event, right? So, obtain three from rolling a dice is an event. So, obtain a pa uh, parliament, which means if you toss a coin, you dapat hate, right? So, you dapat hate. So, getting hate from tossing a coin one time is an event, right? So this is the example of um, of an event and sample space and the uh, experiment, right? So by by this basic term, right? Now when you understand this basic term, you can do a probability, right? So uh, experiment is the process of obtain the outcome. Right, a sample space means the set of all possible outcome from that experiment. An event means the a set of outcome resulting from the experiment. Right. Okay. Now, we shall move to the definition of a probability. So, in a probability of event A, right? Probability of event A is defined as the ratio of number of way. Uh, of event A can occur divide by the number the total number of all possible outcome in the sample space so the probability usually the notation of probability is P right probability of event A is P bracket A right so the, the formula is number of uh, number of event in A divide by number of event in sample space right so this is the definition of a probability right when we talking about the probability there are two properties of the probability right the probability of sample space is equal to one so means that the probability the summation of all probability value it should be equal to one which is also equal to probability of sample space right and then 
uh, the probability of event A is should be lies between 0 and 1. So the probability of event A should lies between 0 and 1. It should let it should not less than 0, it should not greater than 1. It should lies between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. Right? Because the summation of all probability is equal to 1 and the and the probability should lies between 0 and 1. So this is the properties of probability. Right? So uh, by to understand the probability you need to understand the definition of probability the definition of probability again i i, I ulang balik uh, is the number of event occur in a divide by the total number or the total number of all possible outcome which is the sample space for example, if you want to find the probability of A here, let's say I, I, I want to roll a die one times, right? So, uh, rolling a die, right, is an experiment. The sample space for rolling a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is the sample space of rolling a die. So, I just roll a die one time, so I dapat 3, right? So, the probability of getting A is equal to number of event in A. So, ada berapa sini? This is only once, right? Satu. So, how many number divide... Uh, this is... Uh, the denominator is N, S. Means the number of all possible outcome. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, divide by 6. So, the probability of event A is 1 over 6. Right? So that is the definition of probability. So far, can I get the response? Do you understand the definition of probability and the properties of probability? So the properties of probability means that the summation of all probability should equal to 1 and the probability should lies between 0 and 1. So can you comment on chat box so, uh, so I can know whether you understand? So now, we can move to the next uh, next rule of uh, probability. So we are going to have three important rule in probability. So the first rule is addition rule. The second rule is a multiplicative rule, right? And the last rule is complement rule, right? So there is, there are three important rules in probability right so let's look at the first rule which is addition rule addition rule says that when we have a pro uh, probability of event a or event b or both a and b to occur means that if you look at the statement pro carefully we have event a or event b or both a and b to occur means in mathematics, when the statement is or means plus. Uh, when the statement is n means multiply. So, probability of event A or B or both A and B is okay is probability of A union B. So, this is the definition of probability of event A or B or both A and B, a and B to occur. So, it is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersect B if pro event A and event B are not mutually exclusive. This is uh, when A and B is not mutual exclusive. So, mutually exclusive means that we do not have the intersection between A and B. Right. So, this is also known as a general addition rule. Right. So, let's say another condition. When we have A and B are said to be mutual exclusive event. Right. When A and B is a mutual exclusive event, means the probability of A might intersect B is zero. So, by default, you need to understand this formula only. Probability of A 
O B O both A and B uh, to occur is probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersect B, right? So when the pro when the, uh, A and B are mutually exclusive means the probability of A intersect B are equal to zero. There are no intersection between A and B. So by default, A uh, intersect A and B is zero, right? If A and B are mutually exclusive, then so the formula should be probability of A union B equal to probability of A plus probability B, right? So this is the formula. Basically, this formula came from the first formula, which is minus zero. So you get we will get probability of A plus probability B, right? So this is the rule of addition, right? So now let's look at the rule of multiplicative, multiplicative rule. So in multiplicative rule, right, two event A and B are said to be independent if A and B have no influence on B or an event B to occur. Means that when A and B are independent, not related to each other, right? So we if you want to find probability of A and B, right, is equal to probability of A intersect B. If A and B are independent event, right, so probability of A intersect B is equal to probability of A multiply with probability B. So this is the multiplicative rule. So when we have probability of A and B means that probability of A intersect B. If A and B are independent event, so probability of A intersect B should be equal to probability of A in multiply with probability B. Right? So another thing that we need to understand is when we have dependent event, when A and B are said to be independent dependent event, means that A has influence on B to occur, right? So, the probability of B to occur given that A is already occurred, right? So, means that which is probability of B given, so this is a symbol of given, the straight line, A, right? Probability of B given A means that we are interested to find the probability of B given that A is already occurred. Right? A sudah jadi, sudah berlaku. We are interested to find probability of B. So this is probability B given A is also equal to probability of B intersect A divided by probability of A. Right? So if you can remember in set theory, A intersect B is also equal to B intersect A. It's the same value, right? So, it's also equal to probability of A intersect B divided by probability of A, right? In other way, if you can see the, the logic uh, on the trend of the equation, probability of A given B Right? means that we are interested to find probability of A given that B is already occurred is equal, is, is equal to probability of A intersect B divided by probability of B. Right? If you can see, the event that's already occurred should be at denominator. Right? Right? It should be at denominator. Right? So this event is called as uh, conditional probability. So if you can manipulate the formula, if A and B are dependent event, right? If A and B are dependent event, probability of A intersect B should be equal to probability of B multiply with, sorry, multiply with probability of A given B. Right, if you are taking the formula from uh, number two, so this is number one. If you are taking formula from number one, probability of A intersect B is equal to probability of A multiplied with probability of B given 
A. So this is the intersection of A and B when A and B are dependent event. So when A and B are independent event, you just straight away get probability of A intersect B is equal to probability of A multiplied probability B or probability of B multiply with probability of A is the same value. Right? Okay? So make sure you understand how to differentiate between independent event and dependent event. Right. For the last uh, rule that we need to understand is the complement rule. Right. Complement rule, if you understand in a set theory, a complement A complement is equal to uh, the value of um, the value of uh, the value of the element that not reside in A. Right. Means it should be in a sample space, but it not in A. Right? So, S multiplied with minus A. But in probability, if you understand the rule of probability, probability, summation of probability is equal to 1. The summation of all probability is equal to 1. So, complement, probability of A complement right, is equal to 1 minus probability of A. Right? Means that probability of S should be equal to 1. So, if you replace this one, Right, it should be equal to 1, right? So far, uh, can I get a response? Do you understand the rule of addition, uh, multiplicative rule, and the complement rule? If you have a question, please raise it now. So, Alan, do you have any question? Please comment on chat box. Hello. Ada saya dapat respon sikit saja ada 560 orang tapi saya dapat respon sikit yang lain buat apa right alright so if you have no question then we move to example right so now look at example number 7.4 so a die is rolled, so what we want to know what is the probability to obtain number is greater than 3. So, rolling a die is an experiment, right? The sample space for rolling a die is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, let's say event A, we want to get number greater than 3 so means 4 5 so this is under 6 right 5 and 6 so if you want to find the probability of uh, obtain number greater than 3 which which is set a right so probability of a is equal to n a divided by n s so, N A, how many N in A? So, we have 1, 2, and 3. So, we have 3. And N in sample space, we have 6. So, it should be equal to 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5. So, this is how we find the probability value of obtaining number greater than 3. Right. Now, when two coins are toast, right, we are tossing two coins. Right? So, we want to know what is the probability of obtain head and tails. So, let's say I type head and tails. Right? 
So in the sample space, sorry, uh, we are tossing two coins means that we are doing an experiment. So if you are tossing a two uh, coins, right? So what is the what is the possible outcome? What is the possible hit. outcome? Hit, hit, so we're hit. going to have either head, head, or head, tail, or tail, head, or tail, and tail. Right? So this is all the possible outcome. Right? So now we want to want, want to find whether uh, to get head and tail so to get head and tail this is the possible outcome head tail or tail head right so the probability of a should be equal to this is how many two right divide by the number of sample space four it should be one over two which is equal to 0 0.5 so, can you see how easy to find the probability value? Right? So, now let's look at another example, which is example number 7.7. .7, right? So, in example number 7.7, .7, we have two dice are rolled. Right? We roll two dice and we want to find the probability of obtaining the sum of number equal to 6. So, a single die we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or the possible outcome is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you roll two dice together, the sample space should be the first one. Say, uh, let's use our counting uh, information, counting knowledge. So the first event, first event we have 6 outcome. The second event we have 6 outcome again. So, to know how many possible outcome, 6 multiply with 6. So, we're going to have 36 possible outcome. The sample, spa, the sample space should be should contain 36 outcome. Means the first one should be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, and another one we have 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and so on. Lah. Right? Let, let me finish this one first. Right? The 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. This is 3, 4, 3, 5. This is 3, 6. So halfway. This is 4, 1. 4, 2. 3. This is 5, 1. 5, 2. And the last one is 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, this is 6, 4, 6, 5, and this is 6 and 6. So, all together should have 36 uh, element, right? So, this is a sample space. So, now we want to find the sum of number equal to 6. So sum of number equal to 6, which is this one, and this uh, this one, right? This one, and then um, this one, this one, this one, and it's all right. 
So we have basically berapa? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Um, ada lagi tak? Five, one, two, two, four, three, three, four, two, five, one. Ada berapa ni? Lima, right? So, A Event A should have One, five And then this one Two, four Three, three Four, two And the last one is Five, one So, if you want to find the probability of A Which is the number The sum of number is equal to six So we have a is equal to six. We have six element in a divided by the number of element in sample space, which is thirty six. So this one should be equal to. Eh, sorry, this is uh one, two, three, four, five, five, right? Right, five over thirty six. Right. So this is how we get. Uh, the probability of number sum of number equal to six. Right. Uh, let's look at example number seven point eight. Right. We try to do all the example before we go to three diagram, and we will stop at three diagram and we reserve uh, the base theorem on the next class. Right. So a, ra a die is rolled twice, right? A die is rolled twice. Find the probability of obtaining the sum of five or sum of six, right? So again, I try to copy this one. We are already uh, derive the sample space of um, rolling two dice, right? So this is the sample space for rolling two dice, right? Now, first let's say uh, the question asks us to find this uh, the probability of obtaining sum of five or sum of six, right? So to find sum of five. Let's say we we denote as C, right? So C is equal to let's say C is equal to man. I I nak ubah ni tak boleh. Ya. So let's say C is equal to um, let, let me clear the the highlighter dulu. Right, so this is five, this is three, and this is one. So let's say C is uh, the the sum equal to five, right? Sum equal to five, so which is this one, this one, this one, this one, right? So basically, we have uh, four element that uh, the sum is five. So The first one is one and four. The second one is two and three, three and two, and the last one is four and one. So C is number sum of five. And then we have uh, let's see after C we put D is sum of six. Sum of six tadi kita dah calculate tadi kita dah tengok tadi uh, we have one five and then we have um, mm, this is four right two and four 
and then we have 3 and 3 and then 4 and 2 and the last one is 5 and 1 right so to find the probability of C or D is equal to probability of C union D right union means that we need to we, union means that all element in C and all element in D so it should be equal to uh, before we do that uh, let me remove probability sign right C or D C U uh, C union D so this one should be uh, 1 4 2 3 3 2 4 1 and another one is 1 5 2 and 4 3 and 3 and 4 and 2 and the last one is 5 and 1 right so this is union C union D so if you want to find probability of C union D means that we're going to cal uh, calculate or we're going to count the number of element in C union D which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 right 9 divided by the total number of all possible outcome which is the number of element in a separate space which is 36 right so this one should be 1 over 4 or 0 0.25 right so this is how we uh, calculate the probability of uh, the sum of 5 or the, the sum of 6 this one right and the next uh, question is we want to find the value or the probability of sum of greater than 5 or sum of greater than 10 so the same process should be uh, it should be follow the same process lah to find the probability of sum of greater than 5 or sum of greater than 10 right so uh, can you try to to do B example number 7.8 B right I'm giving you three minutes right to find the probability of sum greater than 5 so find find probability of sum greater than 5 or sum greater than 10 so you can use my uh, sample space and try to find the probability of sum greater than 5 and sum or great sum greater than 0 so I want one of you to answer maybe I pick uh, uh, Ahmad Nabil Hakim Ahmad Nabil Hakim Ahmad Nabil Hakim can you respond yes, yeah I want you to calculate for yes. me the probability of sum of greater than 5 or sum of greater than 10 the sum of greater than 5 sum of greater than 10 so so we want to find the probability of sum of greater than 5 or sum of greater than 10 so let denote this one as a and let denote this one as b so can you tell me the 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 value of uh, a union b and b i want to know the how many numbers how many element in a union b 
Atau siapa yang dah siap dulu boleh uh, tolong. Right. So Ahmad Nabil macam mana? What is the number? Uh, how many in, uh, element in A union B? Hello. Wait, sir. I only got for uh, A first. So how many A? I only got element for A. Uh, one, two, three. Twenty six, I guess. Yep, correct. So A and A is equal to and A is equal to twenty six. So how many and B? So now, this uh, this situation is quite different between the first example that I showed this one, right? So if you still remember the rule of addition, if we have a union b, uh, a union b is equal to a plus b minus a intersect b. In this case. For for my example, I I just show it to you. In this in previous example, we don't ha really have intersection. In this case, we have the intersection. So how many a intersect b? Can you tell me how many element that uh, having a same uh, the share same element in a and b? Three, right? So three A siapa yang uh, share the same element or uh, B? Hello, I did not get your response. How many element yang share the uh, yang sama A dan B? Three, so three. Three, right? So we have three. So now we know that N A is twenty six, N B is also twenty uh, is a three, and U A union B is also three. So if you want to find the probability of A union B, it should be N A. It should be let's say I put it properly. It should be probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersect B. So probability of A is equal to N A divided by N S plus N B divided by uh, N S minus N A intersect B divided by N S. So this is the formula. So 26 divided by 36. We have an S is equal to 36 plus probability of B is equal to 3 divided by 36 minus probability of A in the sec B is 3 divided by 36. So the, the probability of A union B is equal to 26 over 36 which is also equal to 13 over 18 right if you convert it to the decimal point you should get 13 divided by 18 should get 0 0.722 right 
This is how you answer the question. Right? Now, let's look at example number 10. Look if I can copy this one. Oops, wait a Now, we look at example number 7.10. Example number 7.10, right? In a box, there are 8 white balls and 6 yellow balls. Two balls are drawn out from the, from, from the box, one ball at a time. Means that we have uh, 14 balls, right? Which is uh, 8 white ball, 2 yellow ball. So we're going to take out two balls from the box, one ball at a time, All right? So find the probability of drawing out two white ball. If the ball are drawn, drawn out without with the replacement, means that yeah, ambil satu dia letak balik. Dia ambil satu dia letak balik, right? So now imagine we have eight white ball. And then uh, six yellow ball, right? All together, n equal to fourteen, right? So, if you want to find probability of a uh, two white ball with replacement, with replacement, so we want to find white ball number one and white ball number two, right? So it become Probability of white ball number 1 intersect white ball number 2 is equal to probability of white ball 1 multiply with probability of white ball 2. So because in this experiment, if we take one white ball, it's, not, it's actually independent event. So it's not going to influence the second ball, right? So, kita tak tahu second ball tu dia nak keluar apa, right? So, this is a set, uh, independent event. So, that's why we use multiplicative rule for independent event. So, this one is, uh, the number of white ball is equal to 8, right? If the if this is the first, first draw, this is the second draw, right? The first draw, we have 8 white ball divided by how many uh, balls are in the box? 14, right? Multiply with. Then this one, in this time, we're going to replace back the first white ball we, we, we have already taken, right? So the, the number of white ball in that box should be equal to 8, lah. So divide by 14. So you, you, I hope you understand. If you can imagine, this is... Um, this is a, let's say the green color is a white ball. So we have 8, right? This is 4, 8. And then we have, let's say the orange color is a yellow ball. Right? So this is a box. So let's say the total number of ball here is n equal to 14. And this is n equal to 8 and this is n equal to 6 so if we take the first ball right if you take the first ball out right uh, white ball out so daripada berapa ada 8 kan so we have 8 possible outcome for white ball right so from 14 balls right and then daripada ball yang kita ambil tu kita akan letak balik right Dah letak balik so dia akan jadi 14 jugalah Dan bola putih ada 8 juga So that's why 8 over 14 multiply with 8 over 14 Which is equal to 16 over 49 Right So now 
The second question is, when what is the probability of ball uh, of uh, of drawing two white ball if the ball are drawn out without replacement? Means that in this case, we taking the first uh, the first ball we took from the box is let's say eight over fourteen. We ada lapan kan? Kita letak dekat luar. So once kita letak dekat luar, dalam ni ada berapa uh, bola putih? Tujuh dah lah. Right? So probability of white ball number one intersect white ball number two should be probability of white ball number one multiply with probability of white ball number two. So this one, the first ball is having 8 over 14. Multiply with the second ball, we should have 7 uh, white ball and the total balls uh, in the box is should be 13 right so this one should be equal to 24 over 91 so hope you can understand the situation how to calculate the the probability value right so now let's look at number two right find the probability of drawing out one white ball in the first draw and one yellow ball in the second draw with us Alright, so uh, I think we're going to stop uh, after this question. Right, so find the probability of drawing out one white ball in the first draw and one yellow ball in the second draw. Right, so the condition is if the ball are drawn out with replacement so now so if you want to find probability of uh, drawing the first draw is a uh, white ball and the second draw the second ball is yellow ball right it should be probability of w1 multiply with probability of y1 right so now with, the, uh, with replacement means that the denominator should always equal to 14. The first draw, the first ball is white, which is 8. The second ball is yellow. We have only 6. Right? So this one should be equal to 12 over 49. Right? So this is the for the first uh, question. For the second question is B, the balls are drawn out without replacement so when we are drawn out without replacement right probability of w1 multiply with probability of y1 right so this one denominator here should be the first one is 14 the second one should be 13 right this is 8 and 6 again so this one should be 24 over 91 right so this is how we answer the question right so i'm not going to move to three diagram yet right we're going to continue three diagram on next class so your task is i want you to really understand the introduction of the probability from uh from the the, the basic term of probability experiment sample space and event and the definition of probability Na divided by Ns, the uh, properties of probability, and then the, uh, the rules in probability, which is addition rule, multiplicative rule, and complement rule. And try to redo this example again until you get the understanding. Uh, you, you can understand the question. Uh, you can understand the method, right? And I am leaving... For you, example number 7.11, 7.12, and 7.13.
to for you to 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 enhance your knowledge on introduction to probability right so far do you have any question can you say whether uh, can you please indicate dalam uh, chat room either you understand or not understand if you have a question please raise it now if you have a question later pun you boleh letter dalam uh, whatsapp right ada soalan tak please respond hello are you there Alright, good. So, if you don't have a question, then um, we shall stop here for a while. Nanti kita akan sambung balik minggu depan, right? So, make sure you polish your understanding on this uh, chapter. This is very difficult chapter, but it's actually uh, very easy if you understand the topic, right? So, I think that's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.